Facing head-on the emotions beneath the surface, as we bridge from an old world of confusion and lack to a beautiful new world of freedom, abundance, and love with straightforward truth and inspired hope is what you'll find on The Charla Anderson Show, collector and connector of fascinating people, and everyone is fascinating. Here's your host, Charla Anderson. Well, good, beautiful day, you beautiful, beautiful souls. This is Charla Anderson, host of the Charla Anderson Show, collector and connector of fascinating people. And everyone is fascinating, especially you. And today I'm a little bit humbled that I uh, am starting season two. This is season two debut show number 50 two of my I've, I've done 51 shows so this is 52 but it's season two episode one and I'm going to have a fun fun time with uh, my guest today Sharon Graves that we're going to uh, have uh, lots of fun conversation about painting and who knows what of course <laughs> with me but remember that or you may not know but I want you to remember to that breathing a, a little bit, uh, taking time to take a deep breath, a little tiny meditation, a mini vacation. I do at the beginning of all my, all of my shows. And so what we do is breathe in calm for seven seconds. We hold for four seconds and we breathe out gratitude for 11 seconds. So here we're going to just breathe in that calm, get centered, get grounded, listen to, be still and know, you know, listen to our our senses here. So here we go. Let's breathe in some calms. Hold. Relax. Release. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for taking a moment. I think we get so we're so moving so fast so often and we got our little devices so often and we forget to just take a a deep breath now and then. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope uh, once a month we do the little test sirens in my neighborhood and it's going off. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but I can. Interesting. Good timing for that. So today, season two, this is March 6th, 2024. Stepping into season two of this show, there will be a few things that are going to be a little bit different as we move forward from um, 2023 version. But for the most part, it's just me talking. It's me having fun people. It's me having conversation and loving people in these unsteady times, talking about hope, talking about overcoming. How where we get? How are we here? What do we do? How can we make a difference in the world? Which is basically it especially sharing unconditional love. That's kind of the premise of my show. So here we're going back into the beginning phases of um, where, where I came from with this. And I don't even, I don't even know how to begin with that. So anyway, so we're today we're going to start with uh, introducing one of my fellow senior tubers. So here, those of us that are doing some YouTube stuff in the senior world, we've got Fran Acero, who is amazing, the, the leader and guide for our senior tuber community and creators group. And one of the members, Sharon Durbin Graves, has uh, agreed to join me today. And let's talk about putting miles on some brushes and smiles on some faces and and uh, painting painting artists bringing out the artists in all of us so Sharon thank you for joining me so so much I'm grateful that you are taking your time today to join us on the Charla Anderson show tell us just a smidge I know you're in Kentucky but tell us a smidge about who Sharon is in this world and then we'll talk about what you do okay thank you so much Charla for having me on your very first uh, season two show. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> and good luck in all your efforts in the future too. Um, yes, I needed that breath <laughs> because I've had kind of a whirlwind week. Um, I'm from Ohio. I grew up in a small town in Ohio that is no longer a small town. It's like a crazy place. <laughs> but I live in Kentucky. I've lived in Kentucky long, much longer than I lived in Ohio. 
And I always felt like there was an artist inside of me, but um, I was married. I had a job. I had four kids. They were all real active and everything under the sun. And so that I just never really pursued it. And then I got real sick. <laughs> and when I got real sick um, and I could no longer work, I could, um, <laughs> there was very little things that I could do. It was still in my head that there was an artist inside of me. And uh, I was um, evaluated for a double lung and heart transplant because what I have is uh, like filling my lungs and heart up with scar tissue. And so I, after the evaluation, they sent me home saying, yep, you, we, we think you're a, a good candidate, blah, blah, blah. And then about a week later, I got a, a letter saying, we've reevaluated and we think that you won't be a good candidate because we're not sure that you won't fill up these new lungs and heart with scar tissue also. And so I'm like, oh, okay. So <laughs> at, at that last meeting, you said I had maybe... 30 to 45 days or so before I was, you know, I had reached my expiration date. And so pushing up uh, the daisies, right? Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. So, so uh, I decided then and there, like, well, whatever time I have left, I'm going to learn how to paint. I'm going to do that. And um, I mean, I can't go to work. I can't, there's so much I can't do now. I, but I can do this. I'm going to try this. And I was awful. Uh, <laughs> I was I was so horrible. It was just so awful. And and I just couldn't and okay, this is before the internet. Be, you know, there was basically nothing in my public library which I did haul my little uh wheelchair and oxygen tank right on down there and there was nothing available for me in in the library. So I found a class and I took this class. I spent a boatload of money. I mean, excess of Fifteen hundred dollars, uh, but I came home after four days with what I considered to be a beautiful painting, and I knew at that point, oh my gosh, I can do it! I can do it! And so, with just that little bit of instruction, it changed the whole trajectory of my life and my um, seeking to be an artist, trying to get there. And uh, so, I just kept painting. <laughs> so so tell me you had 30 to 45 days to live how long ago 22 years so you know i'm not I, I, i'm not <laughs> i don't not i don't believe in getting sick so i don't get sick and that's not really being arrogant it's being yeah. i just believe that you you get what you think about and so yeah. <laughs> uh doctors are not Often fact, are not correct. No, <laughs> often, often not correct. Well, and, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the surgeon who would have done the transplant said he'd never had anybody gain any more than two percent of their lung capacity back, and I was losing it so fast that that's what their calculation was, you know. And then all of a sudden, when I got home, I kind of stopped losing, and after about ten or eleven months. Uh, I had to go have lung functions tests every month where they put you in a box and you have to, you know, and all this <laughs> when you can barely breathe, you know? <laughs> and so uh, after about 10 or 11 months, I gained uh, two or 3% back. And then the next month I gained a percent back and then I gained another 3% back. And, and it just kept going up incrementally until I got to about 60 or 65%. And I told my lung specialist, I said, you need to have them come and get this oxygen machine because I'm done with that. And he said, uh, oh, no, no, no. The number is like 85%. You're nowhere near that. And I'm like, no, you're, I'm not using it. So it's just sitting there doing nothing. And I, my insurance is paying for it. So I need it to go away. And so he said, no, we're going we're gonna to keep an eye on this. And so... He said, if you can get to 70% or so, then I'll consider it. And so uh, the next two times, within two or three visits, I was at 70%. And I said, okay, now get it out of here because I'm done with it. I'm not, I haven't used it for months. And he's like, man, I just feel, I don't know. I just, I, you know, 85 is the number. And I'm like, I don't care what the number is. 
<laughs> I'm not using it. <laughs> Take it I'm away. It's it's a dust collector now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big poster. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the. Let me have my house back. I know. So, so that is miraculous, right? Yeah. Don't you it feel? Is, I mean, and he admitted that. He told uh, an in, uh, an intern that was in his office, he goes, I am such a good doctor. I have healed this woman and I have absolutely no idea how I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, you well, so miraculous. you yeah. choose, so mindset, I'm a mindset type yeah. coach, right? I mean, I yeah. teach every word matters. You speak what you want. Perhaps, do you consider that making the choice Hey, who knows? Making the choice to do you, what you loved and live your life, be you by doing the painting. Yeah. Maybe shifted the energy in your body or your, your mindset enough to, you know, if God, this is my way, I say it all the time. If God can create it, he can heal it, you know? Exactly. So if exactly. you can be healed. Right basically and 22 years later still a walking miracle yeah <laughs> you know i i believe that i've had many people several people on my show that have you know gone through stuff like that basically right. yeah. uh, shouldn't be here at all in year, six I don't years six years later i don't years think later. painting healed me i think um well god healed me <laughs> there, there's no two ways about that but i am ne i've never been a depressive kind of a personality. If I go to sleep tonight with the blues, I know I'm going to wake up fine tomorrow. Uh, but not everybody is like that. But I just decided, okay, I am going to do this uh, no matter what and um, for as long as I can. And th so that was my mindset. It's and not the painting. It's the well, mindset. It's it the is. shift it that I, I, hey, I'm, 20 days, 40 days. I'm already going to die. So I'm gonna... how bad can it be? <laughs> <laughs> I have a, one of my mentors. He's like, hey, you know, every day I get a, a message from him and it always ends, you know, keep breathing free oxygen. And I'm like, yeah. I'm breathing free oxygen <laughs> on this side of the dirt. That's right. <laughs> uh, 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 and, and I'm in Texas. That's my favorite part. But, yeah. you know, that. <laughs> so we, you know, really, to me, this is... Uh, we're talking about painting, but we're my show, my talk is always about, you know, making a difference, living your life, having a, right. uh, how can we make a difference in the next person's life and how can we offer hope? Yeah. So when your hope was, uh, I mean, I, I can't even imagine the devastation of your family going on. Oh, my mom's mom's going to die. I think they and, were more you know, devastated than I was. I possibly. Think they were. Yeah. yeah. My children were all, you know, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what are we going to do here? <laughs> so, and but so, yeah, so I, never, I never, you know, I just felt like um, I've had a good life. I've done the very best I can do. Uh, I've screwed up well along the way, but, you know, um, whatever the Lord says I'm good with. And that was honestly my mindset. I was, I was okay with dying, but until I did. <laughs> I wanted to learn to paint. <laughs> well, that is so that so that one focus is a huge yeah, piece, it yeah. sounds like. And you know, so you your your drive to do something shifted something inside yeah. of you. And I do believe that that change yeah. your words, change your life is my one of my books, but split second transformation. You can literally change your words, change your life. And you you decided to do yeah. Sharon, you decided to yeah. do your yeah. Per, you know, what, what brought you joy and yeah, happiness and give sure. up the things that didn't. And yes. I, there's not a doubt in my mind that mindset makes the difference because we all know people that, I mean, you know, worked for Delta airlines for a lot of years and somebody <laughs> go to the doctor, you know, being fine and get a diagnosis yeah. and they claimed that diagnosis. So, and, yeah. and six weeks later they're gone because, yeah. because they focused on what's wrong and what they didn't want you know they focused on the, yeah. the, the this ease rather than the vibrancy and yeah well I knew I was sick I mean I knew that there was something wrong for like 30 years but they couldn't figure it out until I gave them one little symptom and then it was like watching the doctor lose all the color in his face you know he was like dumbfounded when I gave him the one little symptom that I and I didn't think that they could possibly be related to my lungs but they were 
And so, you know, it was amazing to, to see how quickly everything started to shift. And um, as far as medical care and medicines and all kinds of stuff like that. And I'm like, after about six or seven months, I'm like, you know, I don't really need a, an antidepressant because I'm not depressed. <laughs> I'm accepting whatever happens here, but I'm moving on with my life regardless of what happens. And if my life is on the other side, I'm good with that too. So th they argued with me a number of times about taking me off some of the medications that I, I said, well, you can argue all you want, but I'm not taking it anymore. So have a nice day. <laughs> So you, you, your strength of character, you know, you're standing up to yeah. people that, yeah. that, you know, got the white coat on and I'm sorry, yeah. but that white coat was a marketing ploy back in the forties yeah. and it lit and it was a very good one, by the way, <laughs> it, <But> worked. <laughs> it, it worked very much. And we think this authority in the medical field, and right. I think a lot of us have noticed in the last few years that not oh so my much, gosh. not so much. They're not <laughs> always <laughs> right are they? or truthful. <laughs> You know, and, and, um, we'll you know, it. whatever makes them the most money sometimes. And and it doesn't yeah. mean they're bad people. It just means yeah. they got, you know, they kind of yeah. sold out or they got, something. I they don't got know. caught up in something. Yeah, for sure. So, and, and well, you know, I are misguided for at the, at the least. Exactly. For, for in the beginning of my art journey, it was so difficult to find information to help me. But once I did start to get it, I said, you know, if I ever do get this, I will teach beginners anywhere, everywhere. And so that's why I teach beginners. And I only teach beginners. Um, there's plenty of information out there for people who know some stuff. But if you don't even know what brush to buy when you go into the art store, you're standing there like a deer in the headlights looking at 3,000 brushes. And, uh, oh, that one looks good. I'll take that one. <laughs> you don't know if that's a watercolor brush or... <laughs> You know, paid for us or what? What that? So is. that that's a that brings me to truly. I I wanted to. I was curious about this. So the medium, you know, you use acrylics, right? Oh. There's watercolors. There's oils. Yeah. There's the yeah. the charcoal or I don't know yeah. whatever you know whatever yeah. there is. Asshole. I I don't. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but I feel like uh, you you chose a medium acrylics yeah. and why? Because why acrylics? because with oils you have all kind of solvents that have, you know, lots of fumes and that I, I, I'm not saying that I don't have lung problems because I do, but you know, I could feel that solvent. And so I'm like, yeah, no, that's not going to work for me. So acrylics, you just wash up with soap and water. And They're easier. And bo bottom line, it's easier. easier for cleanup, uh, for your environment. Um, they don't have some of the qualities maybe that um, oils do some people say, but for me, they're perfect because I have about the attention span of a flea and <laughs> I, I, I want to get it done. I don't want to work on something for a week or two weeks waiting for things to dry in between. I'm like, they call them, um, um, oh shoot, I just lost the word. <laughs> I'm having a senior moment <laughs> to where you get it all done at one time. Um, and so, you know, one sitting is, you know, I, when I start a painting, I expect to finish it that day. I wow. Expect... That's, that's amazing to me. And the thought of even being able to do that is yeah, great. I, so... I'm not good at, if I set it aside, there's a 50% chance I'm never coming back to it. So, so, so. the investment is in the canvas and the paints and the brushes. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's a and constant time. investment. Any time. And, well, well, the time, of course, which yeah. is the most critical. It's the critical point. It's, you know, it's easy to go to the store and buy the stuff. But it's the time that it takes to actually improve on. See, I don't think painting is a talent. I think of it as a skill. And you can learn a skill, you can practice a skill, and you can improve on a skill. But only with intentional practice. You know, you it's not enough to do 10,000 iterations. You have to do 10,000 iterations that were, um, you set out to to do a goal, to reach a goal, to get better at this particular thing, to get better at that thing. You have to be real honest with yourself about what you're not good at and then figure out a plan to get good at it. And if, if you're willing to do that, anybody can learn to paint. Anybody. 
<laughs> that that is so I love that. It's a it's a tra- it's a trainable, uh, yeah. learnable it, skill. It's just like playing the piano, learning to dance. Lessons, lessons. You know, mm-hmm. shooting a basketball, playing golf. They're all skills. And you, painting is the same way. There are those people who come here to this earth so overloaded with talent that they're they're let their um journey is shorter but they still have to learn some things and then put those things into use uh but the rest of us we just have to learn it and and practice it and get better at it and and just if you're doing it because you enjoy it it, there's and without the tedious like i've got to do this i have to do this it's like i want to do this i know i can't wait to do this yeah. yeah, and that sounds I'm gonna get like the laundry done so I can paint for an hour. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna I'm gonna get this done so I can go in there and and paint. <laughs> so it's kind of fun on our little senior tubers group that we uh-huh. meet weekly, and and uh, one day you had on your Van Gogh uh, shirt, <laughs> and I have a Van Gogh uh, starry yeah. starry night. They're both starry starry night. All right, and I've got an apron now. You've got an apron too. That's so cool. And <laughs> I, I was like, on I want to <laughs> don't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess it up. So you you uh, mentioned that you went to um, uh, the Monet exhibit, right? Uh, so and 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 have so I have actually been to Givernay and I oh bought this gosh. little I bought this little book in Givernay the 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 Monet's garden and oh and my gosh his home and it was so precious. I this was just a little souvenir and I was like I'm going to go get that out. Oh. And I've also been to the so I haven't been to the inter, those interactive museums are amazing. Oh, they are amazing. I've been to the Van Gogh and the Monet. Oh, there Van, you go. I got the I got the uh, got the sunflower sunflower from the uh, uh, Van Gogh Museum or uh, art. Um, yeah, the experience a, a mm-hmm. experience, and you know, school children are getting to see some of that. I know and coming in and buses it. and learning and, that and going. Spirit. Yeah, you know, when it's I came out, when stunning. I came out, of the, I saw Van Gogh first, and when I came out of there, like my life had changed in the in that hour and a half that we were in there. Um, my life had changed, um, just the way I felt when I was in there and, um, to having like his paintings, like all over me, uh, you know, it's, it, you're covered in them and you're walking on them. You're sitting on them, you know, they're, it's, you're surrounded by them. And it was honestly life changing for me. And then the Monet, um, I was so amazed at his water lilies and I came home and um, I painted, I think, like 15 water lily uh, paintings from an eight by 10 up to a 36 by 36 inch. <laughs> well, and what what I, I think I saw in some of your work was that you do kind of series. You like yeah, to you like get to started on you get started on a, on a water lily and right. you're going to paint water lilies. Yeah. So you're done with water yeah. lilies and then yeah. you'll do hummingbirds and then you'll do daisies and then you'll right. do. Yeah. So I think that's interesting because each time you you improve yeah. it and you know i know pointillism and things like that those yeah. little things with the monet had the uh, the impressionist that has right these, right you get really close and it's just little dots and you it's stand horrible back and it's so just... close <laughs> <laughs> yeah you it's, can't it's figure out what you're looking at up close mm-hmm. but well, a painting is meant to be viewed at six feet and so honestly a lot of beginners in my um in-person classes, I mean, you know, you're like 12 inches away from your painting. Oh, this is horrible. This is awful. I can't stand this. And I'm like, okay, stand up and back up. And they're like, oh, well, that's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks okay. So yeah, you're. it's meant to be viewed at six feet, but when you're painting it, you're like right up on top of it. So you how do I get that perspective right from to Monet to be right in I that know. little, you have well, to be. <laughs> they were constantly backing up and putting in two marks and backing up and putting in two marks. I watched a demonstration this morning of a guy painting a seascape that had rocks all on an angle. And honest to goodness, for the first 40 minutes, I couldn't figure out what in the world he was painting, even though I'm looking at what he's painting. I'm seeing he had a picture and he was on location. So you saw it, but I'm like, how in the world is he going to get there from here? (laughs) 
that yeah. you know we we've all seen the the, yeah. the street artists and people yes. that just all of a sudden they're upside down and backwards and they, they turn and around like, and you're like oh are, are, are they doing uh, garbage can lids and, yeah. and and you know I'm like how did that how does it go from there to there I like to know what's going on <laughs> up in here <laughs> <laughs> they they got to be dyslexic or something. <laughs> I totally see things differently than they do. <laughs> but that, but it's, it's a beautiful um, form of, enter, of, of entertainment, of expression, of, yeah. of uh, gifting. Do you give them? Do you sell them? How do you? I uh, sell them. I, uh, I have been known to give things away. <laughs> and, and people will often say, oh, well, you can't give that away. And I'm like, my painting <laughs> I, I can pretty much do with it what I want if I want to set it on fire out here I can do that too <laughs> in fact I had uh, when we sold our farm um, I had to purge and you don't want your crap going to um, goodwill or something you know you don't you don't want that so um, I just took a, a big stack of stuff out and I did let it light it on fire oh my gosh people got hysterical <laughs> you should have donated those to, and I'm like, that's not how it works. Wow. <laughs> I have 5,000 more, <laughs> I, you know, and besides that, they're my paintings. And if I want to set them on fire, I will. <laughs> if I want to donate them someplace, don't, I'll be the first to do that. So, yeah. I mean, they wow. just got hysterical in my, on my Facebook page. Hmm. And you oh, were showing, I, showing, yeah, showing the a, bonfire, and then you had to yeah, paint y it. Y'all got to straighten up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's preference. It's it's all you know. It, exactly. It is certainly if you painted preference. them. You can do with what you want with them. Right, but, <laughs> but I, I would have a hard I time. Think. I would have a hard time witnessing that as well. Going, ooh, that's 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 art. That's that's treasure. No, that's horrible. <laughs> and you got to paint a lot of crap before you get to being good. You know, and that's another thing that people don't want to to do to do is get through the ugly part. And every painting goes through like this morning, the guy, he, he was a phenomenal painter. But in those early stages, it was pretty strange looking. And so every painting goes through that. But then you will also, as an artist, have to go through the time when you are awful until you get that because that lets you get to being good. But if you don't go through the awful part, you're never getting to the good. If you give up, you know, because, oh, well, this is awful. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. You know, then you'll never get to be the good part. You'll never get there. You have to put in that time and you have to, um, you just have to make some crap art before you can make some good art. <laughs> Well, one of my dear friends, uh, Sister McRae, that um, she's taking, a, she and my sister were best friends. My sister passed in January and they we had a show, Octogenarian Shenanigans, because they were both in the <laughs> 80s <laughs> and in December. And what a blessing to have that. Yeah. And she had, she kind of, to take up her Shirley time, my sister's time, you know, after she was gone, she started lessons and yeah. so i'm i'm uh at the physical lessons in her town in granberry yeah. and so she uh, i did connect her with you and i haven't heard since then if if y'all have connected but um that i just thought what a what a great time yeah. filler you know she you're in well, your you know 80s your... and all of a sudden you want you know it's like i have some i i have time i don't have kids i don't have you know, all the yeah. volunteer stuff right. i was doing she still you does know, that too but uh george w bush when he left the presidency he started painting he started wow. painting and so <laughs> and you got to get it out it. somehow right yeah <laughs> yeah for sure i mean you wouldn't think necessarily that somebody who's been in a, such a high powered thing like that would you know want to paint and yet that was what he wanted to do so he paints portraits and i have one of his books that was gifted to me and uh, yeah, he's, he's pretty good. <laughs> so. I do remember he said, I think it was one of one of them, his like, you know what? I don't like broccoli and I'm the president of the United States. And if I, I think it's okay if I don't like broccoli, not to <laughs> that eat That was his dad. And, and that, yeah. <laughs> his, Barbara was like, yeah, no. You I don't have to broccoli. like broccoli. <laughs> and I don't have to eat it if I don't want no, to. I, uh -uh. I am at this point in my life now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so you can't make me. <laughs> oh, and you can't make me. 
<laughs> Gotta love that. I love that. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah. So we're um, just, what what I don't know. Something that kind of has running through my mind is what's something that you that people don't know about you. <laughs> Maybe I don't want them to know. <laughs> Well, I say, I mean, people, I finally figured out somebody asked me that question. I was like, well, I wrote on the Goodyear blimp. That's something that most people oh, that's don't cool. know yeah. about me. Yeah. That it, it's kind of a cool yeah. secret. No, I mean, that's not a secret, yeah. but yeah, you something don't go that, around talking about it exactly, decades later. Exactly. So, uh, well, I, just kinda... um, I was a florist in another life and, uh, that's I, arti- um, that's artistic. It is. I, I've done artistic things my whole life. I, if you can make it out of fabric, I have done it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I thought flower arranging would be, uh, took my heart completely until I started painting. And um, it just completely, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I know how to do it. I, I never do it, but I know how to do it. <laughs> but um, so I did, uh, I lived in a teeny tiny little town in Augusta, Kentucky. And um, Nick Clooney, the Clooney family, um, George's father and mother, they lived there. And Rosemary had a house there, Rosemary Clooney. And so I did, um, I did uh, their daughter, um, Nick and Nina's daughter's wedding. And so (laughs) um, George was supposed to do one of the readings and he was outside (laughs) playing basketball (laughs) with my 10 year old son and I had to go out and get him and say, George, get in there and do your reading for the wedding. Yes. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So there's little, those are little known things probably about you. I think that's kind of interesting. You know, you you rub shoulders with some people. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But you know, you, when he first was on, um, that his show ER years ago, he was always out playing basketball in their parking lot thing. And, and so that was truly him. He, I mean, (laughs) he was not going to be in any big hurry to get into his sister's wedding. I mean, everybody was in the church, including the bride (laughs) and and they're waiting on George. (laughs) And he's in his tuxedo playing. Oh, he didn't even wear a tuxedo. He had a green plaid suit on. (laughs) Everybody else was in tuxedos. And he's well, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not thinking that's all bad. I think uh, stepping to your own drummer, right? Oh, he's right? stepping to and, his own self, that's for sure. And and it takes, sometimes have you noticed the people that make it bigger, I yeah, have right. uh, their own, they're not fitting yeah, in they, the mold as much, yeah. right? They're not, they're not trying they to. They march to their own drummer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think yes. that's that's hysterical. So yeah, so there's something little known, right? Yeah, so you're sure. flower arranging and for the Clooney family and, and uh I drove a motorcycle. Oh wow. <laughs> so you're a um I was a hippie. A hippie. Well, I me too. Hippie. So I I noticed you I mean you and I are the same age, right? Within I think you're a smidge older than I just turned 70. So yeah. yeah. So I'll be 71 this year. You turn 72 yeah. in May. So, okay. So we're like Nick yeah. and Nick. Right. So we, we, we did get, the 60s. <laughs> but we were raised in the fifties. Those yes, really good, we were raised those in the good 50s. years. We thought yes, they were good. For sure. I mean, who we didn't how think good they, they were. were so great. Then, but looking back now, we know that that was fabulous. <laughs> it was getting yeah. playing in the streets. Yeah, we couldn't and, have been raised in a better time frame. Mm-hmm. I don't think. No. So that, that was fun. And we've got, you know, there's, and we're both passionate about, loving people and making a difference. And I mean, I I guess physically I'm thinking about what do you do with 5,000 canvases? Where do you put them and how do you catalog them and how do you know where they are and how do you, and and how, I mean, my goodness. And my, I mean, I've got people that live here that go and buy the canvases at Dollar Tree now and and getting there and thank goodness they can, you know, people, yeah. there's uh, aspiring artists that can actually sure. get some, you, gotta, you know, and I've done uh, YouTube videos on um, Dollar Tree uh, art supplies and, you know, things like that, because I don't think um, that you can't afford it should be a reason. I really don't think it should be a reason. So you can start something these days. You can start it, with it, something. 
Yeah. And then, you know, after you get some, gain some skills, you're going to want to have better tools. You, you, you can't help but want better tools. Once you get something down and you understand how something works or, you know, whatever. So, yeah, I've done a, several videos on um, uh, cheap art supplies um, just because I, you know, I, I, if somebody says, yeah, I want to, I've seen it. I, I haven't tried it. I don't know if I, you know, what, how good that could be. So, okay, don't spend a dollar 25 and I'll show you how they work. <laughs> exactly. So you, so the, um, the, the tools can get expensive over, over time, but you, you got to start, you know, starting somewhere is better than nowhere. And how do you sign your, how do you sign a $20 brush? Oh my goodness. And uh, I bought it 20 years ago. So it's an investment. I bought it in my first works. class that I took, you know, that was part of the reason it costs, so, the, the cost was so much because I didn't have the right supplies. I didn't, I had to pay for the class naturally, which is four or $500. And then um, a hotel, food, you know, I had to get there. <laughs> so by the time you add it all up, it was like $1,500. But those brushes, I take care of them. I use them all every day. And so, yes, they can be very expensive. If you will take care of them, um, <laughs> you're going to have them for a while. So my 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 daughter that uh -huh. was, <laughs> lived here and, and she just finished repainting the uh, master downstairs and and they she's like they would they would not wash anything. They threw them away every paintbrush and every tray and the in-between coats so they would leave paint sitting you know in the in the trays and just toss it and it from a a, someone who's a very conservative yeah. uh yeah. it with stuff i'm not it's yeah you know i'm like Ugh. she said yeah. there are some things i'm like that with but messes like that forget it and i was like i there's probably some freedom there <laughs> i'm sure she yeah. didn't buy yeah. the most expensive ones but yeah yeah. I, that was, that was problematic for me. Just it a is problematic bit, for me too. Yeah. Just cause I'm, a, I'm, I just want, I, well, I, I want to call it a, be, I, be a, be a good steward. I used yeah. to think I was cheap and I don't think that at no, all. I think no. I was, I'm a good steward of what yeah. I have. Of what I, I, didn't, I, I never we, had, a, I never had much. Right. So I think in a, uh, the generation we grew up in, you took care of what you had, you know, I mean, when I, I don't know how you were when you were a kid, but you know, bread didn't come in a plastic bag. So if you got a plastic bag for you something, washed it you out. washed it out <laughs> and you kept it. <laughs> and shook it out and hung it up and let it. Uh, you, you did. Know. Exactly. And I so still do that. I mean, it's hard for me to get rid of some. It bags. is. So, yeah. I mean, it's, this is just real and yeah. it's not because, um, I mean, when I watch the things that are just totally wasted all the time, I was just like, Oh my gosh, please. It's stop. hard. It's really hard <laughs> yeah. um, to, because I want, I may not want it. I may not need it, but I don't want to just throw yeah. things away. I want the person, somebody in this world yeah. that could use it yeah. to have it. To get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And, right. and to make good use of it then. So, you know, that's, that's our story and that's yeah. where yeah. we came from. And, and, uh, you know, we had the first black and white TV and, in on our block, you know, we oh, yeah, no. not us. <laughs> we, uh -uh. we we had one like this big. <laughs> well, it was it was it was small, but it was yeah. still the first. Yeah. You know, when they first started coming out, it was yeah. kind of an interesting. That's in the mid fifties, I yeah, think. So right. um, I don't think we had a TV until after my sister was born in nineteen fifty seven. So I think that was when we first got a TV for us. So when my grandma had one, I remember going. What is that? <laughs> wow. Let's go to grandma's. <laughs> and yeah, go to grandma's and watch them, the mus musketeers or whatever. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> and it, and, and at, at 10 o'clock, we had oh, the, everything went off. Yeah, yeah. And they said the Pledge of Allegiance, the flag yes. was flying, and we, we shut down. <laughs> the National and Anthem played. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I and then it all that. started up I that way the, again in the morning. Yeah. The patriotic yep. uh, yeah, piece of that sure. was important to me too. It was. It still is. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it still is. 
So we've got, we covered a lot. I just want to know what is, you know, there was a lot of you. So your website, Sharon Gray, D-U-R-B-I-N Graves is where you, you go. Right. For That's where name. you can see my art. Sharon Durbin Graves. Sharon Durbin Graves art.com. And then. Oh, and you've got another website called. I have a website, a teaching website. Okay. And that's painting with acrylics 101.com. A brilliant, a brilliant <laughs> site. I think that's brilliant because 101, you know, we already it's know that's beginning. a class, you know, yeah. beginning class. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, yeah. I when, when I went to find, you know, the website and it was available, I'm like, I can't believe that's available. <laughs> so I want that one. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I uh, you could, painting with acrylics 101.com painting right. with acrylics 101.com. Okay. And yeah. your YouTube channel, which is why we're here together is because <laughs> it's acrylic teacher for beginners, acrylic yeah. teacher right. for beginners on YouTube and people can yeah. find you there. And I know that you have um, a couple of things that you really like to offer. And you've already said this once, but you'd like to, um, uh, it's a skill, right? We can it improve is. our it is absolutely uh, a skill. And we can practice it and improve on it. And right. it's not talent. It's no, about it practice. is not. I, so, I swear it is not talent. <laughs> and so there might be some innate ability that you, some have more to than others. And, your, as you learn things, talent will come out. And you know, things that you didn't know you had the ability for will come out as you learn things and, and, but until you actually go through that process of learning some things and practicing some things, the talent really just, it's in there, but it can't come out. You haven't opened up the door for it. You have to open a door to let it come out a little bit. You know, even, even artists who come here with a boatload of talent, but never paint or draw or anything like that, it's still in there. It's it's hidden, and so yeah. <laughs> well, your your mission here is to teach other people the right. the skills and to reach I have women mission. that have a. What's your mission? Okay, let's I uh, I want to teach a thousand purpose driven beginning artists learn to paint using fundamentals, elements, and step by step instructions so they can move their art journey forward faster. Wow. You're very clear. <laughs> and it, it takes some clarity to, to be able to do that. And there's not a doubt in my mind that that's going to happen. It's not, you do mostly women or do you, what's your age uh, you know, range? It, that's you, an interesting question. I don't intend to do mostly women, but that is mostly who, uh, who attends my classes and stuff, but it's an interesting thing. And I have never had this to not be true. When I have a husband and a wife, or a brother and a sister. And I've had brothers and sisters in little street art classes that I have done during festivals and stuff. Uh, and um, I, I had a brother and sister come up last uh, last fall. And, and, and this is never not true. Never. <laughs> the guy will be, the girl will be going, is this right? Should I do it like this? What do you think about that? And the guy will be standing there just slopping the thing. <laughs> and having Every fun single time i mean it must be genetic and because having uh, yeah and having fun doing it right they, they never so. ask me is this right <laughs> <laughs> they just throw it on there <laughs> how fun is that though um <laughs> well i i always know when i have a man join my class we are gonna have fun <laughs> Well, you, we have fun no matter what, Sharon, you laugh Yeah, I do. I'm going to have You're fun. Like, That's the whole goal. If I'm not having fun, I'm probably not going to be doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and that is, that's beautiful. And you've got, um, so we, I think one of the things you would, if anybody, when people listen to this, you want them to subscribe to your YouTube channel yeah, and perhaps just take a, take a, a look around yeah, and, and check it out. I have a free class on my website. There's a free class there on my website on paintingwithacrylics101.com. You can go there. I have a blog that's full of free stuff and it is completely ad free. <laughs> I have no ads on there. So if you go to find something, you can actually find it. And I hate it when I go to Pinterest and I want to find, I see something I want to look up and I click on their link and 
I can't find the article for the ads that keep popping up. I'm like, not, I can't, I don't either. I, just, I can't stand it. it. It's stupid. It's so yeah. much. And it's, so, and it, so YouTube with uh, the, we also want to invite people to this better. Yeah. 50 and people up maybe or 40 age. and up, you know, people of a certain <laughs> age to come to our uh, senior, go on uh, yeah. Facebook and come to the senior tuber community. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's really a fun little community. We'll and <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait yeah. at you. <laughs> and then, and then we're, we uh, went ahead and joined a smaller group that right. was a little bit more, uh, more intimate and more fun. And, and we yeah. just have uh, uh, just, we're, but we're learning something every week about we optimizing are. our YouTubes and yes. how to, how mm -hmm. to do that. Not about it. And all of us are different subjects. It's not about <laughs> painting or anything. But, right. Um, it, it's, it's very about, funny that, um, that the, the women and men who are in there, uh, we're all, you know, 60, 65 and up. And you just don't think of us as the tech people. And, and yeah. <laughs> there we all are learning tech stuff every single week. Uh, and I'm a, I, somebody asked me to write a skill. What is one of my skills? And mm -hmm. I was like, it, where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm a bulldog when I'm that's, looking yeah. to try to get, when I'm especially to on out. tech. Oh my gosh. I will I spend, know. I, know. I spent eight hours trying to figure out something not too long ago and I gave it up and changed. I mean, I finally was like, this isn't going to work for me. And that was Eventbrite. <laughs> I fired Eventbrite. I went to Ticket Source, And so I'm like, okay, I can do this. And this is, this but, is never going to happen. So, <laughs> yeah, but I, but I'm, I will punch through until, yeah, you know, I will and, keep at it. You know, it might take me 10 times longer than a younger person, but I'm going to get it. I, I am but, going to uh, get it. And the next time I do it, it's two, three months down the road. I've got to start over because oh, I don't yeah, I remember how I did it. <laughs> right. yeah. How did I do that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's the same thing with me trying to edit these videos and stuff like that. I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm going to figure it out. And I so, know I am. It's all figure outable. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> And now, and we got we got experts. We got friends that yeah, now we can we actually ask questions. Yeah, we got people. We can. We got peeps. We got our people. <laughs> we got people. <laughs> we got our people. Okay, so Sharon, any last word? And uh, let's just uh, call this a day and have a a blast doing it. Well, if I just want people to know, if it's in your heart to paint, don't keep it there. It, it, let it get out. You can do it. It it will be uncomfortable because it is something new. Just like if you decided you were going to go to ballet class now, uh, it would be uncomfortable. And so say this is too. This is going to be un and just embrace that because you you'll you can get out on the other side knowing something and feeling so much better about yourself if you'll just let it go. Let it come on you know, and give it a chance, you know, and if you try, if you spent 30 minutes, three days a week, two days a week, you would be stunned at what you can learn in that amount of time, but you won't be able to stop at 30 minutes. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get addicted to it. You so I just, it, it just reminded me, my mom was, uh, had entering in her is you know the I guess the dementia years or yeah. whatever but she went and my my sister made sure she went and got uh went to these painting classes mm -hmm. and we we it got can really some help. pretty we yeah. got some pretty pictures that she uh did that you know I don't know if they I were taught a woman paint not by number long. or what I don't know what they were but it but they I taught a woman nice. not too long ago who was in her 80s and could barely speak could not get up the stairs um but her work her daughter brought her and I think the daughter was a little frustrated that the mom's work was better than the daughter's. I mean, it's not like I said, oh, your mom's much better than you. <laughs> but, but it was obvious. <laughs> it was <laughs> obvious, right? I could so that's, that's that, great. So. Yeah. so yeah, that's that was a treasure that my mom left Absolutely. for us. You know, do, do five or six paintings that she didn't yeah. go along. Exactly. It, it can later. help you a lot in your mental cognition. And it's and it's a treasure. And yes. if it's not, oh, it's okay too. So, that, and I'm those. guessing, I, I one thing that came to me, you said, you know, if you've got this heart desire to paint, it might be 
you don't even have a clue that you would like to paint. So yeah, you cool. so go. I think that some of these little yeah, yeah. paint take a ceramic paint classes class. or classes yeah. or some kind of artsy yeah. things, and you were like, huh. This is this creative is, and this is yeah. fun. And we can, yeah. when you get into that creative mode, it can, it can be all anything. It can be all it, kinds yes, of things. For right? sure. So. It could be just about anything, but give it a shot. Find a class in your area. Um, I have a free class on my website. I've got tons of free videos on my YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, there's, there's plenty of information out there for you. If you want to learn to do it. Just pick it up. It's like writing, pick it, peep. We call it PPP, pick. Put the pen to paper and push, you know, just yeah. <laughs> if it's just nothing but doodling right now, yes. you can just, uh, you know, yeah. and then the words will start flowing. Every so day, it's like similar. free form writing on your computer, you know, just mm -hmm. just typing, whether you got words there or not, doesn't matter. It's and just getting into the, into the memory. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's been so much fun. I love having you where uh, we'll see you tomorrow on our, you know, on our senior tuber group and uh and just you know but having having uh just conversation this is something i realized really this morning i, I don't sit around and talk for an hour to many people other than no, once a week i, I get to sit around for an hour and talk to people and yeah. and, and, no, and new either. people and have conversation and find out what's going on with them and how can we uh yep. Find our yeah, common you know, ground. And I, when my I tell this about my husband and I all the time. We've been married. It'll be fifty-two years next month. And um, <laughs> when we first got married, he was the hermit and I was the social butterfly. And sometimes in the last five to ten years, he's become the social butterfly and I'm the hermit. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> we have completely changed. He has to go out at least twice a day. Oh my, my gosh. car can sit in that garage for a week. <laughs> Mine does. I, yeah. I don't, I'm not, I don't, unless I yeah. have some place to go. Yeah. I don't go out just to go. I don't, I, run, I don't need I to have go run list. errands. I'm going here, here, and here. I'm coming back and I can't wait to get back. <laughs> so, it's the same way. That's so yeah. weird. Yeah. 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 And I don't I, want to people today. <laughs> my, my, well, my grandson said it's, uh, it's too, uh, it's too people-y. <laughs> <It's too laughs> <people -y. laughs> I agree. It's too people-y. <laughs> <laughs> the deal is I am so social that yeah. when I am out, I'm, I'm collecting yeah, I people all the time. Yeah. I talk so, to everybody, but then too. I'm done. I'm drained and I need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that's funny that y'all so shifted like that. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me today. It's been fun oh. and real and real fun. And <laughs> we're going to, uh, thank you for being my debut, uh, season two guest. And, oh, I'm so uh, excited for that. And I hope everything goes very well for you this year. You know, <laughs> it will or it won't. That's my yeah. sister saying it will or it won't. Like, that's when, that's and my late sister, she's like, <laughs> it will or it won't. I'm like, okay, that's great. Okay, well, and she, right. <laughs> build a bridge and get over it. That's her other saying. I was like, all right. Yeah, and I'll always look for the win, win, win. So those yeah, are her three, for sure. for sure. her three things. So here we are on win, win, win uh, TV. Yeah, we and, are. We're on the win, win, win thing. <laughs> Well, blessings to you, and thank you thank so you. very, very thank much you. for being um, being here with me today. And uh, we'll be in touch. Watch the Charla Anderson Show weekly okay. live every uh, Wednesday, one o'clock Central Time, Wonderful. on the Charla Anderson Show. Blessings, and always choose joy. Parting is such sweet sorrow. The Charla Anderson Show. Encouraging you to stand strong and courageous with bold faith, no fear, immense hope, kindness, and love, especially towards yourself. Visit CharlaAnderson.com for replays, blogs, and more on her ever-expanding website, as well as watch her live TV show on WinWinWomen.tv, Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. And so that we can continue learning together and growing this community of beautiful souls, we invite you to share The Charla Anderson Show with your circle of friends. Until we meet again next week, remember always, choose joy.